It's October 2016, and a worried Harvey Weinstein has Seth Friedman, an investigator for the Black Cube Intelligence Agency, spying on women he fears are revealing his sex crimes. One of them is actor Catherine Kendall. Hello? Hi, Miss Kendall. Yes. Uh, hi, it's uh, Seth Friedman, you know the journalist. Oh, right. Yes, hi, how are you? Friedman poses as a journalist, writing a piece on Hollywood lifestyles. When I spoke with Seth Friedman, my experience was that, you know, I started to trust this journalist that I was talking to. He was really nice, and he seemed really empathetic. And there's no way that I could have ever guessed that I was being spied on. There are some incredible ass out there. I know that for sure. I mean, I had somebody come on to me in a very scary way when I was first starting out. Like a huge, 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 powerful producer. And it was scary. And unexpected and it was scary. And it me up. Like it it really, really rocked my world. Another woman whose name is on the list is Rowena Chu. Her name marked red as a priority, along with that of her boss, Zelda Perkins. I now know that Seth Friedman tried to contact me as recently as winter 2016 and you know, early 2017. That, to me, is a completely chilling confirmation of something I've always known. I've always known that Harvey was keeping an eye on us. They said during the negotiations, they knew where we lived. They knew where my boyfriend lived. They knew where my parents lived. They knew where my sister lived. Still fearful when Friedman reaches out, Rowena stays silent. She has never before seen Weinstein's hit list. I can already see a lot of names I recognize. What's amazing about this list is that most of the people on this list worked at Miramax. They don't have fame. They don't have a publicist. They don't have agents. They're not wealthy. They worked at Miramax and earned barely anything. It's, it's just wrong. What this list represents is something deeply wrong and deeply evil. This is kind of, you know, off the record from my side, but I know that there are papers in the US at the minute, I think like the New York Times and a couple of others, who are kind of looking very specifically into the allegations that people make about people in Hollywood. I think that would be exciting. Yeah. I think that would be really exciting if that happened. He was the one who told me that they were doing a story at the New York Times. I guess I didn't know that they were doing that story right now. And now that I know, maybe I will. Maybe this is something I should think about, for real. Yeah. Then I started thinking it might be morally the right thing to do at this point. Like, if I don't say anything, I'm holding back information that other women might need me to stand by them. I don't know, you know? Don't let me be the trigger about the New York Times. I wasn't trying to do that at all. I was <laughs> When the New York Times contacts Catherine a few weeks later, she breaks almost 25 years of silence and tells her story. Other women are also beginning to shake off their fear of Weinstein. So I said, okay, this is it. This is the moment that I was waiting for to break my NDA to get those recordings out. By now, the contract Weinstein had signed with Friedman and the Black Cube Intelligence Agency has ended. The New Yorker publishes the article by Ronan Farrow, which includes Amber Gutierrez's recording. When the recordings came out, I remember that day, my life was coming back to me. The New York Times publishes at the same time, using information from Catherine Kendall and more than 30 other women. Just over six months later, Weinstein is arrested. Your Honor, the defendant is before the court charged with two violent B felonies for two separate forcible sexual assaults against two different women. 
When he got arrested, I was at my parents' house in DC, and I saw it on the news, and I burst into tears. Because each step of the way, it just gets more real to see him in handcuffs. January 22nd, 2020, Hollywood Titan Harvey Weinstein is on trial, ending decades of silence that he imposed on his victims. He's accused of sexual misconduct by more than 80 women. Because of the statute of limitations, prosecutors press charges related to just two. He's accused of sexually assaulting Miriam Haley, a former PA on Project Runway. I remember Harvey afterwards rolling over onto his back saying, don't you feel we're so much closer to each other now? To which I replied, no. And he's accused of raping aspiring actor Jessica Mann in a Manhattan hotel room. We need justice for these victims. But Weinstein is ready to fight. Tara Leigh Wolf is a witness for the prosecution. In court, she has to face the man she says raped her. The day I had to testify, I felt so little. I felt like a little girl walking in there. And seeing Harvey Weinstein out of the corner of my eye, I felt like I needed to face my fear. And so I did look over, and it just, I, it made me crumble a little bit, and I couldn't go there. As Weinstein listens, Tara Leigh describes the shocking attack he inflicted on her in his New York apartment. He took me by the arms and turned me around and put me on the bed. I told him, I can't. And he said, don't worry, I had a vasectomy. He put it that there was something that I didn't expect to be asked. And then afterwards, you got in the back of a car with him after he allegedly raped you? I wasn't prepared for that. It, I, it, it took me out, it broke me down. And it's doing it to me right now because it just, it's, it hurts to think about it. Miriam Haley would also face brutal cross-examination. Miriam Haley was originally from London and had come to the U.S. after meeting Harvey Weinstein for a production assistant job. In 2006, he invites her to his Soho loft. She accepts for the sake of her career and for the sake of staying in the United States because her visa's about to run out. In court, she describes what happened inside Weinstein's apartment. I kept trying to tell him, no, don't go there, don't do that. I'm on my period. I've got a tampon in. It was as if he didn't believe me. It was excruciating and it was maddening to watch the defense, trying to paint a picture of the women in the worst light that you could possibly paint them in. I felt so discouraged. Donna Rattuno's cross-examination of Jessica Mann was even more hostile. Jessica Mann is a former aspiring actress who met Harvey Weinstein in 2008 at an engagement party in the Hollywood Hills. Her relationship with Harvey Weinstein is insanely complicated. She admits that it was extremely degrading. She admits that some of the sexual encounters she had with him were consensual. But she says that a lot of them were sexual assault. At least two of them were rapes, and that she made it clear in those situations that she did not want to have sex with him, and he did it anyway. He threw me down on the edge of the bed, and he was demanding that I take my clothes off. I said, no. He said, I don't have time for games. But at the time, acted like she was just in a relationship with him. And she broke. She started uncontrollably sobbing on the stand and had to be taken out. And you could hear her in the witness room on the other side of the courtroom screaming at the top of her lungs because she could not handle it any longer. Honestly, it was grim. The jury is out for five days. On February 24th, the verdict finally comes back. Harvey Weinstein is guilty of a first-degree criminal sexual act and third-degree rape. I couldn't believe it. I started jumping around my 
apartment and then crying. I felt like a heavy weight from my chest was released. When I was able to process the verdict, the guilty verdict, and it took an entire day to really understand what just happened, I felt justified. I felt justice was served. Harvey Weinstein's last attempt to silence his victims has failed. I always had this fear of Harvey Weinstein. It was like the name you don't say. I think he must have lived with the sense of knowing that he'd done something wrong, but whether or not he had remorse for it is a different story. Weinstein is appealing his conviction, but his decades-long reign of abuse and intimidation is finally over. After the sentencing, I just had this feeling of confidence again. I, I just felt straighter. I felt, I felt taller. I feel like I, I'm writing my own story again, and who I am, who I want to be. I was crushed, oppressed, silenced. And then in 2017, all the way up to 2020, I at every step believed the worst. I thought this would never happen. And so I finally got a sense of we got him. Um, be careful. To find out that all these years later, the world cares and all these other women have had the chance to come forward and unburden themselves of the shame that was never theirs. It's a remarkable moment in history. And it feels, it feels really good to, to be standing with these other women and having this moment. And I feel happy for my younger self that she, you know, she finally got to like put him in his place. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리.